Hello everybody and welcome back to On Point HQ and the third video in the Bolt Action Basic Series. In the previous two videos we have covered how we build an army for Bolt Action, the different unit qualities and also how we issue orders to our units. In this video we will be covering an important core aspect of the game, combat, specifically shooting and the close quarters combat. As with the rest of the series, this video will provide a very basic outline of how these mechanics work. So, let's start with how our units shoot in games of bolt action. Now, there are a whole host of different weapons that units can be armed with, but for this video, we're going to be looking at two five-man units armed with rifles. Before we move on to an example of shooting, let's first have a look at the weapon stats. Now, each weapon has five different statistics, but it is common that many of these won't apply to all weapons. Now, these statistics are type, range, shot, penetration, and special. Briefly, the type denotes the weapon's type, so in this case, rifle, but in many other cases, submachine gun, light machine gun, etc. Range indicates the weapon's maximum range that the weapon can be fired at. Shots denotes how many dice are rolled when the weapon is fired. Penetration relates to any modifiers added when making a casualty roll and special outlines any special or specific rules individual to that weapon. Let's look at the stats of the weapon we'll be using in the examples of shooting in this video. Now the weapon's type is rifle and it has a range of 24 inches. So this means that the, the maximum range at which this weapon can be fired is 24 inches. It has a shot stat of one, which means that one D6 is rolled whenever the weapon is fired. It has no penetration value, nor does it have any special rules. So with these statistics being outlined, let's see how the shooting works in bolt action. Here we are in France 1940 to demonstrate how shooting works in bolt action. We have two five-man units armed with rifles facing each other, and this will outline how a unit fires at its chosen target. Now the French infantry section chooses to fire at the German unit facing it. As the German section has not yet activated, it has the opportunity to react by going down. In going down, an order dice is taken from the dice bag and placed next to that unit. The unit will benefit from taking cover, but will be unable to activate until the following turn. The German player decides not to go down, and so the French player then checks the range between the two units. We find that the range is 16 inches, so well within the 24 inch maximum range of their rifles. However, the shots will be at long range, as the distance is over half the maximum range of their rifles. This will make the shots more difficult, but not impossible. The French player picks up one dice for each model in the unit and throws five dice. In bolt action, a successful hit is made on a three or more. However, this does not include any modifiers, so we add these now. The only modifier is for long range, so we check the chart in the bolt action rulebook, and we can see that this confers a modifier of minus one. This means that a successful hit will be on a 4, 5 or 6. The dice are rolled, so let's see what happens. As you can see, a 4, 5 and 6 has been rolled, which means 3 successful hits. Next, the French player rolls a dice for each successful hit to see how many casualties the German section takes. As the German section are regular troops, they will be removed on the roll of a 4, 5 or 6. And looking at the results, we can see that a 2, a 3 and a 4 have been rolled. This means that one model is removed as a casualty with the roll of a 4. As the unit has been successfully hit, a pin is assigned to the section. Although it was hit three times, only one pin is added. Some larger, heavier weapons can assign multiple pins, but as these are rifles, just one pin is added. Next, we will see what happens when the German unit is activated and gets to return fire. It is now the German section's turn to activate, and this will allow us to use several of the mechanics that we've looked at so far in the Bolt Action Basic series. The German player decides to issue an advance order to the unit, but as the section has a pin from being hit by the French unit, it must first pass an order test. To do this, the player checks a unit's troop quality to see what they need to roll to pass the test. As a regular unit, it has a base quality of 9. As it has accrued 1 pin, this is deducted from the base value, giving a total of 8. This means the player must roll 8 or less on 2d6 to have the unit pass the order test 
and be able to activate. The player has rolled a 1 and a 4, totalling 5, so the test is passed and the pin discarded. The unit can now activate as normal. The player gives the unit an advance order and it moves forward 6 inches towards the French unit. When the move is completed, the unit opens fire. As it sustained one casualty from the French fire, the unit will only roll 4 dice. As we learned previously, a successful hit is a 3 before modders, modifiers are added. So let's look at what mod modifiers are applied to the roll. As the unit has moved, there will be a minus 1 to hit added. Some weapons in the game allow you to move and fire without penalty, but as they are armed with rifles, a modifier will be added. However, as the unit has moved closer to the French unit, it will not be affected by long range, so a successful hit will be on a 4, 5 or 6. The German player rolls the 4 dice, so let's see what happens. We can see that a 4 and a 5 have been rolled, which means 2 successful hits. We now need to see how many casualties are incurred by the French section. The German player rolls a dice for each hit, so two dice are rolled. The French infantry are regular troops, so will become a casualty on a 4, 5 or 6. The player rolls a 1 and a 6, so one casualty is incurred. But hold on. Rolling a 6 when rolling the casualties can lead to what is called exceptional damage. This is whereby the player that is firing can choose what model is removed. They may choose to remove an NCO, a light machine gun, or another target within that unit. To check if exceptional damage has been caused, the player rolls the 6 again, and if a further 6 is rolled, exceptional damage is incurred, and the player gets to choose which model is removed. Unfortunately, a 5 is rolled, and so the French player gets to choose the casualty. With the unit hit, one pin is added, and both units have now completed their activation. With the basics of shooting now covered, Let's have a look at close quarter combat. With the basics of shooting now covered, let's look at how fighting at close quarters works in games of bolt action, using the same units as before. The French player assigns his unit a run order and declares the unit it will run towards. To engage an enemy unit at close quarters, a unit must be given a run order. If the unit that is being assaulted has not been issued an order that turn, it may react to being charged by opening fire. If the unit has been activated already, or the attacking unit is less than 6 inches away before engaging, the unit may not react. Reaction fire is covered in more detail in the bolt action book. The attacking unit is then moved into contact with the enemy unit it is attacking, and the first round of combat begins. Unlike the shooting phase, there is no requirement to roll to hit, as all hits are automatic at this range. The French player rolls a dice for each man in his unit. As the German unit that he is attacking is a regular unit, casualties will, casualties will be incurred on a roll of a 4, 5 or 6. We will assume for the, this example that the German unit has already activated and so therefore cannot react with op by opening fire. So with bayonets, grenades and a blood curdling charge, the French assault the German infantry. The French player rolls two fours and a five, so a very brutal and successful attack sees three German soldiers down as casualties. At this stage, the German unit, or what remains of them, gets to fight back but will only roll two dice as three of its number are now gone. The German player rolls two ones, which means the French unit has taken no casualties. We now look at which side caused the most casualties, and in this example it's pretty clear the German unit has lost the encounter and is now destroyed and removed from the battlefield. Yes, close quarters really is that brutal. The last action the French player needs to take is what is called a consolidation move. This is a move that does not require an order to be given. The player simply rolls a d6 and the unit can regroup ready for the next turn. The French player rolls a 5, the unit regroups and consolidates up to 5 inches away. So that is shooting and close quarters covered in this third video of the Bolt Action Basics. These two examples were very simplified and did not take into consideration such aspects as cover, different weapon types, morale and more in-depth aspects of the game. For a more detailed overview of these parts of the game, the main Bolt Action rulebook will certainly have you covered. I will link to the previous videos in the series in the description below and I've also created a separate playlist where these videos will be kept. 
I hope you found this third Bolt Action Basics video helpful. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below and I will certainly respond to all comments and questions. But as always, thanks for watching. Do take care. May your dice roll well. And I will catch you all in the next video. So, bye-bye for now.